seven lifestyle of worship. Instead of just thinking worship service, maybe we should change the order of those words to service worship. Since God's desire is to make each and every one of us transform into the image of his son, Jesus Christ, Sort of makes sense for us to serve like he served. We need to pick up the towel. We need to wash some feet. We need to look for needs. We need to <coughs> serve in secret. We need to give without anybody knowing what we're doing. Paul challenged us not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And after that challenge, we go on through the next six verses of this portion of Romans 12. He goes on to define our worship as using the gifts that God has blessed us with. He instructs us to use our faith in meaningful and tangible ways. Being transformed in the newness of life in Christ Jesus means using our faith to reach others. If we hold that faith inside of us, it's doing us a whole lot of good, but it ain't doing nobody else any good. Faith is meant to be shared. Yes. For some of us, it may be teaching. For others, it may be serving the needs of others. And others may be called to give generously. Others might be called to provide leadership. Others may be called to sing. Others may be called to have just a, an enormous gift of faith. Whatever the gift the Lord has blessed you with through the Holy Spirit is the gift that you have been given to make your faith tangible and meaningful. Our spiritual gifts are how we demonstrate our service worship. You know, worship is not to be confused with perfection. We are, however, to offer our best to God and to receive His grace and to continue moving forward. So when we slip up in our worship, when our lifestyle doesn't quite meet God's standards, <coughs> don't give up. That mercy just keeps pouring out of the fountain. We just focus our eyes on Jesus, and we stand up, and we start all over again. Close this morning with what I'm calling God's altar call. I'm going to ask Allison if she'll go ahead and start playing the hymn. Don't freak out, it's not a traditional altar call. God's altar call is really what Romans 12 1 is all about. It's a personal time for us to present our lives as holy and pleasing sacrifice. verse, the very first verse in Romans 12 literally means you, all of you, present yourselves to God. When I was growing up in the Southern Baptist Church, we used to sing a song called, Is Your All on the Altar? So that's the question I ask for everybody this morning. Is your all on the altar? That's all God's asking for, all of it. how the message translates Romans 12 1. So here's what I want you to do God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life you're sleeping you're eating, you're going to work and you're walking around life and place it before God as an offering Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. God does not want us to lie on the altar as a dead sacrifice. He wants us to live out our lives as living sacrifices for Him. He's urging us right now to first 
surrender our lives. To say, God, everything I have is yours already. I'm just taking my hands off of it. I'm giving it back to you. And he asks us to worship through serving him. As we sing our sermon hymn this morning, I would encourage each of us to consider how God is calling us to embrace our faith. How we're called to live out our faith as living sacrifices. Nobody has to come forward if they don't want to. I'm not asking for that. You may want to stay in place. You may want to just re-examine the mercies that God has poured over you this morning, or this weekend, or this past week. You may need to think about the mercies that are coming up for the week. If you want to come up to the altar and pray with me, I'll be here to pray with you. And I'd just like to close this morning by saying that our relationship with God is not a spectator sport. It's an active, living, sacrificial, sacrificial way 